Christmas heaven, West Virginia, Blue Ridge Mountains, Shenandoah River. Life is all. Hello again. I'm just a guy who loves to make props and stuff. And in this second part of the video, I'm painting and weathering the Fallout Plasma Pistol. Like the breeze, country roads, take me home to the place. Now that the actual build was done, it was time for the paint job. First off was the basic preparations. I give the prop a good couple of layers of rubber spray paint, sort of a plasti dip. The next step was to add some texture, just something to easier build up a rust paint effect with later on. Now you can use a variety of mediums for this part, but I went with some spot putty, which I just dabbed on with a paintbrush. I tried to apply it in places which rust would naturally build up. Once I was satisfied with the look of it, I gave it a final coat of Plasti Dip before moving on to the base colors. I wanted a really steampunk feeling to it, so I went with a shiny copper and a flat bronze. Mixing two colors like that is a really easy way to give the prop some more depth. For the rest of the parts on the prop, I wanted an old steel metal shipyard feeling to it, not the chrome metal look. I started by mixing up some acrylic paints, Mostly a light grey with some silver and orange to it. I brushed on the paint rather quickly, just freehanding it. I didn't want to waste any time on masking or taping off parts before painting. As you can see on a couple of other props I made, the Diva light gun is also EVA foam. On this prop, the lines are really sharp, a lot of masking and no weathering. For this apocalyptic Genji helmet, I painted on a lot of rust. And you can't tell, but underneath the paint lines aren't that sharp. Sadly though, it's still too flat since there are no layers to the texture. So to save some time, I just roughly freehanded it, because this prop was going to be really weathered old and dirty. Once I had all the base coats applied, it was time to attach the tubes. I simply cut them down to the accurate length, and then I hot glued them all in place. It looked pretty accurate with the reference pictures at this point, and really steampunkish. Of course, the weathering is the part that's gonna really make this piece come alive. Unlike everybody else, the weathering is really my favorite part. I usually do several different techniques of weathering, and depending on the prop, there is always a risk of doing too much. Too much rust and weathering. That's why I was so excited in the first place to do this fallout prop, because I really wanted to go over the top with the weathering and apply all my different techniques. To start off was a simple acrylic watered down earthy color wash. This is the most common technique. Simply splash it on, go darkest in all the cracks and corners, and then wipe it off again till you get the desired look. Once I had applied this first layer of weathering, I could move on to the next part, and if needed, I could always go back and do some more. Not sure what this technique is called. Paint washing maybe? I have this box of small screws, nuts and bolts, which I've collected over some time now. This really came in handy now, as small details like this really adds to the credibility of the final prop. I simply made some holes in the EVA foam, using a nail for the small ones and a soldering iron for the bigger holes. Then I could just screw them in, the same way as you usually would. and it came out looking pretty awesome. All the way up until now, I've been using acrylic paints, but for this next step, I'm using some oil paints. I've been doing oil painting on canvases for the last 30 something years, but I've never used water mixable oil paints before. But it's supposedly great for using on props. 
I usually go for a flat paintbrush. Not the fluffy kind, but the one with a sharp tip. And the first thing I'm going to paint is the rust effect you get from leaving things out in the rain. To make it believable, you have to look at which way you will display your prop, and make sure you keep your brush in the same direction constantly, trying to follow the path of the imaginary rain. A dark orange is the color I usually start with, just adding small amounts of paints at a time, always using the tip of the brush in a downwards movement, trying to follow whether rain and gravity would lead the rusty water and maybe leaving a slightly bigger puddle underneath some of the bigger pieces. It really pays off to take your time with this part of the process, just playing around with different shades of earthy, rusty colors. Always start with the darkest color, then layer the shades on top of each other to end up with the brightest one. In the end, the result is pretty rewarding. At the risk of making everything too uniformed, dark and brownish, I add even some more layers and hopefully make it even more believable by adding some bright colors. Remembering my first car, I'm sure bright yellow and red are pretty common colors on a really rusty piece of metal. For the copper parts, I'm going with a green color. From my experience, copper starts to erode when left out in the rain, and it gives off different shades of green. I apply the color slightly outside the corners and cracks. This way the green pops out a little more. And the corners which I applied spot putty earlier is left in a brighter copper and looks to bulge out a bit, which is nice. I apply the color in this manner around the whole prop, making sure the colors don't look uniformed, but random and natural. To add even some more painting effects, I took an ordinary scrubbing sponge, which I then dabbed in some darker shades of brown paint. Then I used it to give the prop some more texture and rust patterns. I wasn't worried about taking the weathering on this prop too far, I wanted it over the top. So next, I kind of mixed together the rest of the browns with a lot of water. Then by dragging my finger along a bigger paintbrush, I splashed on some paint. Hopefully making it look like some tiny rusty holes. I'm surprised I managed to not go too dark and brown on the whole prop, and the bright red and green colors definitely helped. But nevertheless, I wanted to bring up some more highlights. So a quick fix was to use a Q-tip with some silver rub and buff. I used it really sparingly. It's actually the only weathering effect I've been holding back on on this prop. I did the same effect with some shiny gold bronze paint on a Q-tip too. I believe it also is a kind of a rub and buff. And I know it isn't on the original, but I wanted something more. So the last thing I did on this prop was to add a kill score and some text. And just like that, one awesome looking plasma pistol was finally done. Almost heaven, West Virginia, Blue Ridge Mountains, Shenandoah River. Life is all there, older than the trees, younger than and that was it for this video i hope you liked it and if so just hit the subscribe button and i will try and share my next build with you thanks for watching uh -huh.